We're good? Okay. So my name is Doug Hetty nowadays. Um, and over the summer, I was with ITA. And I was an AD CVD compliance analyst. Um, it was a sweet name. And AD, <laughs> AD is anti-dumping, and CVD is countervailing duties. Um, like John had a good setup, he said that uh, in port administration, what we mainly deal with is anti-dumping cases and, and duties in general. So uh, just a good schematic of the Department of Commerce, which ignores everything except the important thing, which was my office. Uh, we had the Department of Commerce, then the ITA, and then I was in the Import Administration. And within the Import Administration, um, I was in Office 8, which is an NME office. I was really confused in their first meetings because they kept saying China and NME, and I was like, wow, this is really blatant. Um, <laughs> but it, it meant non-market economy, I found out later. <laughs> Um, so just real quick, anti-dumping, most of you are aware of what anti-dumping is. Um, the big difference between NME offices and others is there's a lot more work to determining the market value in the home country. You can't just take the, the sell price of a good and say that's the, that's the market price like you could in the U.S. or other market economies. So there's a lot of other calculations that go in. You have to take other countries, similar uh, industries, similar business sizes. Um, and all of the inputs and recalculate everything to find a new uh, market price. Um, and just so everybody knows, uh, anti-dumping is, uh, or dumping is illegal by WTO, which is why the U.S. has these offices. So how the process was wor would work is um, an American business would file a petition. IA would determine uh, the fair value if they decided that the petition is meritous. And then the International Trade Commission, which is actually kind of like the Supreme Court of Trade, they have uh, these groups that come together and decide whether or not injury has occurred. And if, if they agree, then, then they'll write saying, yes, pursue. Um, but it's kind of neat, because you can see these commission results. And then if they dissent or they have a different opinion, you can actually see their decisions and, and the write-ups of why they disagree or agree. Um, after they determine whether injury occurs, then import administration will determine the difference between the fair value and the price sold. So that's going to be your dumping margin if there is injury. Um, and then uh, Customs and Border Pr Protection, which is CBP, will collect the duty at the port um, by HTSUS. So that's just kind of how the IA works. Um, and I was only on anti-dumping. I didn't work with any countervailing duties. So assignment. Um, for the two months I was there, I basically had one assignment. And it was to determine whether um, one product over the history of the last 22 to 24 years was actually in the scope of an HTS or was out. And for this one product, because it evolved over so many years, um, the end result decision would mean millions and millions of dollars to whoever was affected. So no matter what the decision was, it made me feel comfortable that we would be sued anyway. So it didn't matter. <laughs> um, so there was a lot of companies involved. And even outside the companies that were involved with the facts of the case, it would affect everybody depending on uh, the outcome. So a little bit of the. Um, does that add up to 100? Perfect. OK, good. I didn't check that. <laughs> <laughs> so about 50% was reading. Uh, the first day I was there, there was a stack of about 400 pages on my desk, and they were just like, catch up. Uh, so the second day, I was like, OK, I read this. Now what would you like me to do? So you submit an opinion, and then uh, it led on to more assignments. And I actually got to take charge of the case and kind of drop the intern label for all the correspondence between law firms, which is pretty neat. Um, so you read a lot of. Arguments from uh, law firms representing all their businesses. Um, this product, I had to have uh, technical papers from engineers. Um, there's a lot of writing, so correspondence between the law firms, um, correspond like writing things to the file, so everything is all, oops, everything is all um, official and also public. So there's public documentation of most of the stuff that's done. Um, and then research, because these are all arguments by law firms trying to make the best case. And you kind of want to see through the holes and verify that what they're telling you is the truth. Um, and then about 10% was Excel work. So by law, I think in 2004, they decided that every case that has dumping should have a sunset review. So every five years, we have to review all the cases and make sure that if there's no more dumping, then we have to get rid of the dumping fine, the duty. So this is actually the scope that I was talking about. So I dealt with this one scope for two months to figure out whether this one product was in or out of this scope. And it doesn't seem like a lot of writing, but there are a lot of things that go into that uh, one classification. And it was tedious, I'll say that. 
The other thing, so this last line, the scope of the order is dispositive, um, the written description. There's a lot of back and forth to say that with all these HTS US codes, um, if it's classified in there, it doesn't really matter what the Border Patrol says. What matters is what IA says, um, whether it's in or out of scope, depending on this description. So the perks. Um, the whole time you're there, you're learning about trade and government. Um, so a lot of these cases you'll actually read in the New York Times, like when it comes to the tires or the steel. Um, these are big cases. So um, you, you see how a lot of these cases are used as leverage for policy in general. Um, a lot of them, when we make an opinion, it'll go all the way up to the, to the higher ups, and then they'll say, well, we're not going to actually issue this yet, the fines, we're gonna, we might use this for leverage, depending on what the trade representative is doing with other countries. Um, lots of responsibility. So the briefing paper that I wrote at the end of two months uh, is actually the stance of the U.S. government. So when you make these arguments, they have to be backed by legal and policy. And if everybody agrees with your stance and your opinion, then, then you are now the opinion of the U.S. government. So it's pretty heavy, uh, but it also is fun. You work with a team. So I had my own companies and my own case to work with, but there was somebody else working on the same product, just with different companies. Um, another thing is deadlines are federally mandated. I don't know if anybody's worked in the government yet, but if you do, or if you have, you realize that since you have a deadline that's federally mandated, you have to have something in by that time, but you have a lot of leeway in between. So the cool thing about that, as long as you're timely, as long as your work is good, then you're kind of lenient on when you come in, when you leave, when you want to go watch the World Cup. Uh, so that was pretty sweet. Uh, and location with DC. So I got to have the 4th of July in the nation's capital. Um, you'll see when you go there that you're right across from the National Mall, the big old green strip that's there. You're right across from the, Mos the Washington Monument, um, free museums, and a huge knowledge center. Another perk was that I got to go visit law firms. So they are opening up and then having conventions with representatives from China. And afterwards, there's an open bar, and you get to mingle with all the lawyers and diplomats from China talking about economics, um, which is a pretty huge perk that you can't just find anywhere. And then the internship with ITA, there's a lot of contacts. It opens a lot of door doors. You get to meet a lot of people. Whether you like the gig or you want to do something else, I mean, there's just a lot of opportunities when you're there, because international trade with the US government is in DC. OK. So there is a formal channel to get the internship, but since there's so many iPad alums there, I would recommend not doing that. Um, how I got it was I just kept up with Shane. I went to DC, met him. I kind of made it apparent that this is what I wanted to do. And I kept, kept up with him in emails. Um, and then when he said it was open, I sent him an email with my resume, my interest, he sent it on to a guy named Gary Taverman, and then the next week they called me back and said, hey, come to DC. So I didn't have to interview, I didn't have to do anything, um, which was great, because when I showed up, I realized that everybody else there had to interview. Um, so people from Yale, from Brown, all these people had to go through an interview process to get here, and all I did was send off uh, my resume to Shane. And finally, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's completely OK. It's uh, legit. Get her done. So I think uh, there's fun. That's water, by the way. So um, there's a lot of fun. This is actually right on the, the, the Washington Monument for 4th of July. Uh, it's a great time, to, great way to spend your summer, and you, you learn a lot. So uh, I highly recommend it. Questions? Questions? Anybody have questions?